Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. Real Estate Coaching Radio is the nation's number one daily radio show for realtors who demand authentic real-time coaching. Get ready for fluff-free, unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what's truly working to get you into action, helping others, and making money now in today's real estate market. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we are back. So I want to give a whole bunch of announcements. The uh, Corona-19, the Chinese virus, the whatever you want to call it thing, is the news is coming fast and furious. We're going to be increasing the number of podcasts we do uh, from one to probably maybe three, but probably two per day. We're going to be bringing on a whole bunch of special guests that are going to be um, designed, and the guests are going to be like we're bringing on Rob Johnson, for example, and he is probably one of the nation's leading luxury real estate agents, and he's going to be on talking about how to sell luxury in this market. We're bringing on a friend of ours who uh, focuses on and is really a true expert, probably the nation's leading expert on probate. We're going to be bringing on somebody about short sales on BPOs, the whole thing. So what we're doing, guys, is we are treating this as if we are we have declared war, you know, in essence. And what we are on war footing, and we are going to do everything possible to give you guys as much valuable, actionable information as quick as possible, so that you can make money. It's incredibly critical if you're a premier coaching student that you log in to Harris Learning every single day and attend these daily semi-private coaching call every single day because we are giving the specifics of things you need to be doing now to make money. Um, the primary focus for this week and probably into next week is going over our three-part plan, um, which is called the Agent Survival Guide, and part one is called Protect. Now, by Protect, what we mean specifically... It's called Personal. Oh, sorry. Julie's right. <laughs> Protect is part two. Okay, so Julie's right. So it's called personal. So personal is the first part that we're going to be finishing up and, and really drilling down uh, in the next few days. And personal is really designed to show you guys how to put your own masks on first. Um, so keeping that in mind, the personal subject is all about money. It's all about essentially making sure that you financially can weather this storm. It's incredibly important that you remember what I'm about to tell you. This is going to last longer and um, have more adverse effects on our economy than probably what you want to believe. Okay, there it is. Uh, we talk a lot on our main website, Tim and Julie Harris, and the different articles we're publishing about all the different news that's coming out about the expected unemployment rate, you know, all the things that are happening. But here's all I want you to remember. There are no comparables for what we're experiencing. You can talk about September 11th. You can talk about the depression or the recession of 07 through 09. You can talk about whatever you want to talk about, but there's never been a time in U.S. history where effectively all businesses have just been shut down. That's never happened before. And unfortunately, many of the businesses that are being shut down are going to be wiped out as a result of this, which means the unemployment rate is going to skyrocket. That has a That's baked in at this point. Now, the only reason that you'd even remotely see optimism and all this is if for some reason they come up with a uh, a cure for this virus and they come up with it really quick but they're not going to all the doctors and all the administration uh, folks and everyone else you listen to they're projecting 12 to 18 months and they're also projecting julie and i read over the weekend we read a lot about the spanish flu about how what these damn viruses have a tendency to do is they'll ebb and flow so they'll essentially the there'll be a decrease in the number of new cases being reported and then all of a sudden it, you'll start seeing an increase again as people start uh, stop taking precautions over the next two to three weeks we're going to hear some truly crazy scary mind-boggling information coming out from around the country as different municipalities, as different states, um, frankly, try to deal with the spread of the virus, you're going to see some absolutely draconian, almost martial law type things happen in some of the cities where people are not paying attention. I mean, just today, New York City, which is the epicenter of this thing now in the country, which doesn't isn't surprising because the density of humans, um, you know, the people are still going to, uh, what's the park there, Julie? Central Park. Central Park. They're still yeah. going to Central Park. And mayor and the mayor there said, "I this is kind of crazy. People were on lockdown, and you're all going to the damn park. What's going on?" And so Central Park's going to be shut down. Pretty much all over the country, beaches there's being shut down. Anything and everything 
that people have taken for granted is, well, I guess I'm just going to have the day off. You know, the virus has closed everything. You're, they're going to do everything and anything to sequester all of us in our homes. It's going to be forced containment. And that's what's going to freak people out. That right there is not a sustainable approach to the virus because Americans won't put up it for very long. But that's what we suspect is going to happen. Not everywhere, but certainly in some of the major cities where people aren't paying attention. We're hearing reports. Uh, if you guys start paying attention to any reports about um, military vehicles, we mentioned this the other day because I'm, you know, just Google this military vehicles being moved on trains, um, moved by um, like the uh, National Guard. They don't use trains to move their vehicles. They always do them on the road. So when you see um, a big group of Humvees pass you on the freeway, that's National Guard. But when you see a big group of military vehicles pass you on a train, that's the actual military. And what we're hearing people start to report is they're starting to see military vehicles being moved to city centers on trains. Now, this might be just be people, you know, freaking out and, you know, whatever. We'll have to pay attention to see what happens. But it does make sense that if you're in an area like Chicago and people aren't um, universally respecting the lockdown, that they're going to have to probably put the military in place to get you to stay in your house to stop the virus. It's spread. all self-inflicted. Just stay home. The longer yeah. we all, you know, or the, the faster we all comply, the quicker it's going to be over with. And, and you know, Tim, I, I mean, I had incredible attendance on my premiere call today. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's always a popular call, but you know, everybody's having lots of questions. One of the things that came out on the call, and these guys said this on them by themselves, unprompted, was how focused they are because they're at home and how they're getting so much done that they didn't do because they were driving around all over the place doing all kinds of you know, semi real estate related things, the focus is higher. So take advantage of the fact that your home, take advantage of the fact that all of your past client centers of influence and leads are home and make this a good thing. Don't blow it by getting arrested because you're roaming around some park. So the agent survival guide is available to all of you. We're not done writing it. And frankly, it's never <clears> going to be done because it's a living document. As things come out from the government about different programs that you guys are going to all be eligible for, for as real estate practitioners, um, and we're going to talk about some of those today. You're going to want to check back with this constantly. We're doing our best to come up with the leading edge information about everything that's going to be relevant to you. Um, we're not going to give you drill down information on this podcast because that would entail us giving us giving long links and phone numbers and addresses, and we're not going to do that. So what we want all of you to do, if you're a Premier Coaching student, you go to Premier, go to the Harris Learning site. We put up a new section called Agent Survival Guide. Everything that we're presenting, every detail, every factoid is there. It's not to our usual level of polish with regards to the document. It's a, I, I'm calling it a draft because it's constantly going to be getting updated, but all the relevant information is there. And if you're not in Premier Coaching, we haven't forgotten about you either. Here's all you've got to do because we really want everyone to have this information. Just text the word survival to 31996. Text the word survival to 31996. And when you do, we're going to send you a link and then you can basically get that information too. It is absolutely critical that you listen to what Julie's about to present to you guys today because this is going to be the very information that is going to turn your life around. And no, we're not talking about centers of influence and virtual mm -hmm. showings. We're giving you more practical, tactical information than we see anybody else talking about. Jules? Yes. Okay. So let's get started here. There's six rules that we want you to follow. Rule number one, assume everything's going to get 10 times worse than you think it will. We talked about that. Do not use any financial comparison from the past 30 years. Um, not since 1929 has there even been anything remotely like this. And that includes things like unemployment. You know, during the 2007 and 8 recession, the employment peak, unemployment peaked at just under 11%. During the actual depression, it was 25%. They're predicting it could be as high as 40%. There is no comparison. Rule number two, you must put your own mask on first, meaning take immediate action to take radical steps to save your cash and your cash flow. We're going to show you exactly how to do that, but do not wait. Do all of this now. There's no downside, no cost, no credit damage, and chances are you will be thrilled that you followed this guide for the next 12 months. Rule number three, again, this is a working document. We're going to be updating this plan constantly. If you want the latest updates, listen to our daily podcast, which is... Uh you're listening to it now. You're listening to it now. Right, so you know but how you, to get there. You can get it on. You can get it on timandjulieharris.com. You can listen to it. Subscribe on iTunes, and that way iTunes will push the newest show to you. Obviously on Stitcher. And by the way, guys, um, please absolutely be recommending our podcast to every single agent 
um, that you know. Help us get the word out because this content that we're about to give you is going to be the very thing that's going to keep food in your kids' bellies. Julie? Yes, rule number four, and we're going fast because we have a lot to cover here. That's why we record them and post them. You can listen again. Rule number four, hope for the best, but expect the worst. Assume everything you did to generate leads, et cetera, over the past 10 years, aside from what's mentioned in this plan, will not work in this new market. Everything has changed, not will change. It has already changed. Rule number five, over the next 90 to 120 days, the pain level will be at an 11. So you have to be optimistic, but not a Pollyanna. The optimist who hopes for the best and is prepared for the worst will be the one who thrives in this historic downturn. Rule number six, do not spend any money on anything without checking with us first. Like the last crisis, this one will spawn a lot of scams. And by the way, Tim and I have already seen and shot down two or three of them just in the past probably two days. REO, REO list scams. They, yes. Those REO son, son of a bitches list scammers are already out, guys. So I'm going to bottom line it for you. Do not be giving anybody any money to sign up for any REO list or any BPO list. Those are scammers. They'll take your money and then they're going to disappear. Do not do it. And again, check back with us and we're going to out as many of the scammers as we can find. And it's funny, Julie and I, all you got to do to find out whether they confirm these guys are scammers is find out who's behind it and just do a deep dive into Google and you'll find sure enough, these same scammers are around back in 07 mm-hmm. through in 09 doing the same thing. Many times with different names, but it's the same people. What they do, guys, is they'll sell the same garbage information. You'll realize you got ripped off. You'll try to charge it back. You'll try to find out what's going on. The money will be gone. And then they basically relaunch a couple of days later under a different name and their own personal names and I attach to it. And they keep on doing that. They did that last time. They'll do it this time. So I'm going to say this. Do not give any money to anybody to put your name on any list. And by the way, the REO train is not leaving the station anytime soon. So if you think the next thing that's going to happen is a spike in notice of defaults, or if you think there's going to be a spike in REO activity, you are wrong. And we're going to talk about that. That's right. And under the rule of not ponying up your money for any, you know, whiz bang social networking magic bullet. That's in the same category. These things that marginally worked in the seller's market, which now we know lasted from 09 to just now to 2020, will not work. A seller's market makes every marginal idea seem possible. That was the market, not the idea. Okay, so be careful about that. Rule number seven. Now more than ever, you must do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. For 98% of you, that means learning real sales skills and how to generate your own leads proactively. So those are the seven rules, Tim. We can jump into part one. Now, before we get to part one, we are going to be talking about programs that are essentially socialization of a lot of the things that, you know, Julie and I are libertarians and we don't necessarily like the government interceding into our lives. And I had this a couple text exchanges going with people where they were sort of like saying, well, people who now suffer and fail and businesses who suffer and fail had it coming because they weren't prepared. You are absolutely stone cold wrong and a bit of a jackass for saying that. And here's why. Because if you're, you first of all, back in the day, 07 through 09, when there were people that were essentially should have been, uh, you know, been more responsible, who were over buying houses, who are, you know, doing ninja loans, who are doing all these crazy things just for the sake of basically, you know, trying to have a winning lottery ticket in the form of a house. And those people went bankrupt. I agree with you. That should have been, that should have been a risk. That was their risk. That was their overreach. And they should have been paying more of a price for that. But obviously, the government thought, um, you know, different than that. So that's the reason a lot of people, all these programs came out of the government, all these other types of things, okay? So do not compare what's happening now to what's happening then, because here's the difference. Back then, it was self-induced, right? Back then, you created your own problem. Now, what's happened is we are in a kick-ass economy. And all of a sudden, the government said every single business effectively in the United States is shut down. That is not the small business owner's mistake or fault. They did nothing wrong. You are a small business owner. You did nothing wrong that's all of a sudden essentially kept you from actually practicing real estate. You're not doing anything wrong. You didn't make a mistake. The government basically forced you to essentially effectively go out of business. And as a result of that, the government does owe you something. They did take something from you and they owe you something for what they took. And they acknowledge that and they know that, which is fascinating. So these programs that they're coming out with are going to be far reaching. They're going to be expansive. Um, And, you know, Julie's going to get to the specific thing about mortgages. But here's what I want you guys to remember. Today, the Fed chairman said there are no limits. There are no upper limits to what we'll do to save the economy. There are no upper limits, folks. 
just putting that in perspective, during the last go around with this, in 07 through 09, there was less than a billion dollars that was, uh, yeah, a billion dollars that was, uh, I'm sorry, less than a trillion dollars that was pumped into the economy. $873 million or billion dollars. I always get, I can't believe I can't get that clear in my well, head. There the are num- a lot of zeros. Their numbers about. are so big, right? But less than a trillion dollars. Already, the government's talking about three trillion. We heard that last week, but now we're hearing five trillion dollars. Which is 12 zeros after it. Yeah, so think Even about that. Even my high-end luxury agents don't know how to calculate that many zeros. Have you already figured out what 3% of that would be? Sorry. <laughs> no, that's a good question, You can't help it? yourself, can right, you? I know. It's your the relative, mind wanders, doesn't the it? The real brain. What's 3%? We'll ask 12? Rob. He'll know yeah, when you exactly. interview him. We'll ask Rob on his interview. He's probably sold <clears throat> yeah. 12, a $12 trillion mansion probably. up in Greenwich. Well, so when you're going through this and you're listening to what we're saying, please set aside your judgmental. Some of you guys are, you know, you're going to take that stance. I've already experienced that when we're talking about these programs, kind of surprised that we're championing these programs. Well, we are championing these programs because this is the the thing that every single small business owner, not just a real estate person needs to do. Because if you were selling real estate back in 07 through 09 and the wheels came off the wagon, you know who was there to help real estate agents? Nobody. There were no programs, there were no handouts, there were nothing that was coming from the government, and that's the reason that so many agents needlessly suffered. I'm not saying it's going to be a walk in the, you know, walk down the primrose path this time. I'm saying it's going to be a pleasant experience, but at least now there are some options and ways for you to save immediate cash flow. Julie? Yes, that's right. So I was just talking to Tom about how fast that's getting posted, which is right now. Okay, so we are talking about three different very specific sections. So today is personal. That's what we've been talking about. Why are we starting with personal? Because if you're not in good shape yourselves, you're not going to do a great job for your family, your past clients, your centers of influence, your active listings, your leads. You must take care of yourself first. So take care of your own financial house immediately. We're going to be watching every government program to learn if it applies to you. So for example, number one, your mortgage. You must take advantage immediately of the mortgage forbearance programs. A forbearance is a suspension, not a deletion of the debt. This can help you for 90 days to up to one year. Bottom line, no house payment for up to a year and no credit hit. This is really an incredible gift that you must take advantage of. You can do this on your own personal residence as well as rental properties and vacation properties. Breaking news. This just hit the wires exactly about the point Julie's talking about. Breaking news. This is on CNBC. Mm -hmm. The Mortgage Bankers Association estimates that about a quarter of borrowers requests and are granted loan forbearance for six months or longer. Demands on services could exceed $75 $75 billion. They could climb well well above $100 billion. That's what you asked me yesterday, how the services are going to stay in business. Well, the answer, Julie, is the government's going to give them money, right? Right. Point number two, and this is is breaking news, that could easily bankrupt the mortgage finance system. Again, the government bailout, don't worry about it. The MBA sent a letter late Sunday to the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell and Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin asking for cash-supported mortgage servicers, just what I just said. Yep. So here's what's happening. Julie's point now, and I'll summarize it, and I'm, we're not going to give you the drill down points, guys. We spent hours researching all this for you over last weekend. Julie's probably got, I bet she's got 15 or 20 hours researching this. If you want the document with the results of all of her research and you're in Premier Coaching, just log in and it's sitting there waiting for you. There's a new t- a new tile or a new section called Agent Survival Guide. If you're not in Premier Coaching yet, we still want you to basically benefit from this information. So just text the word survival, S-U-R-V-I-V-A-L, text the word survival to 31996. Text the word survival to 31996 and we'll send you a link back so you can basically join um, the Premier Experience, which is a essentially it's about 10% of our normal Premier Coaching program, but it's something we came out with just to make it so that real estate agents out there don't have to needlessly suffer. It's an entry level program. It's very very base level program. It's no long, I'm not even going to remotely suggest that it's anywhere as in depth as Premier Coaching. It's not. But it is, this information in particular is part of that program. So go, and it's free. So go ahead and text the word survival to 31996 and we'll text you back a link immediately and you can uh, grab your membership. Julie? That's right. So remember this mortgage forbearance applies to your primary residence, your rental properties. Think about what your tenants are going to be going through. Vacation rentals. The vacation homes were already immediately hit. That's already pretty much come to a screeching halt. So if you've got a mortgage on any of those, it applies. Um, And then you can read a lot more detail after you text that request. But who qualifies? You do not have to have the virus to qualify for payment relief. 
The relief applies, again, they reiterate, to any type of property. It's the homeowner's responsibility to contact their mortgage servicer if they're being affected. Now, this is the important part. Even though the press is going to just pound the daylights out of this, because it is a pretty incredible headline that you can have mortgage forbearance for up to a year, that does not mean that the entire country has just waived their mortgage payments. You have to call your lender, fill out their form, and do it the right way to not have your credit affected. Don't just stop making your mortgage payment and think that you know it's all going to be cured for you. You have to make that call. Now, we've had some coaching clients already do this, and they're reporting one call, one person, one form, one and done. To not do this is not putting on your own oxygen mask, guys. We don't know if that means that if you have a rental property and you put it into forbearance for 12 months, whether or not, yeah, I, I can't imagine they're going to be able to prevent you from continuing to collect rent. And I'm going to, I, you heard what I just said. So I'm not an expert at that, but I, and you know, I, I can't, haven't heard anything to the contrary, but no. we'll, we'll keep monitoring that, so that and we'll post updates. So that means hypothetically, you could put your mortgage on your rental property and forbearance and still collect rent. But here's the thing, all of you, even if you have the money to do this, to not, you, you can weather the storm. Just remember, the storm can last a lot longer than you possibly imagine. Or have a second wave. Right, or have a second wave. It would be basically, essentially, let's say best case scenario, the uh, virus starts to essentially wane towards like summer, maybe fall. Well, guess what happens? We're back in cold and flu season, so it's going to come right back again. So the reality of it is is you definitely need to put all your mortgages in forbearance. Yes, you're going to have to pay the interest and the principal on the back of the loan, but no payment for the next 12 months. And by the way, that great tenant who's always paid the rent on time um, in your house, in the house they live in has a, got a small mortgage on it. If they stop paying their rent, you're going to have to make that mortgage payment without the, you know, without the cash flow from them paying their rent. That's the reason we want you to put all your mortgages into forbearance immediately. Just get it over with. And Julie, there's another report that just came out, but we talk about it anyway. There's a new report that came out that they're expecting. Um, this comes from Capital uh, Economics. They say, they're saying that they're, there's going to be a projected at least a 35% drop in home sales uh, this spring, whatever that's yeah. defined as. And as Julie and I predicted last week, or actually the week before that, pretty much every, no, not pretty much, all the I buyers are effectively no longer buying. So the I buyer business is gone and, and many of them won't come back because they're not going to be yeah. able to recapitalize fast enough to get back in the business. So that, you're, That's called a positive unintended consequence for all of you <laughs> listening. You no longer have that to think about, worry about, or compete with. That's Done. Right. Boy, that happened quick, didn't it? Yep. Okay. So uh, uh, related to this, borrowers, this may apply to some of your spouses or family members or past clients centers of influence. Borrowers who are emergency responders or who work in the healthcare field can ask their payments on their mortgages or other consumer loans to be deferred for 90 days. Um, the deferral does apply to both principal and interest in this case. Other customers affected uh, can benefit from their relief program. Okay. Now that's all about mortgages. Part two, your car payments and credit cards. And Julie, you do have, Julie did list and research all the direct contacts for most of the major banks around the country. Yeah. Um, and you need to get that report. So if you're a premier coaching student, it's there, they're waiting for you. And if you're not, just text the word survival to 31996. Yeah. Um, and just because your bank, might, your servicer might not be listed on Julie's list, it doesn't mean that they're not doing this. Pretty much every bank is, every mortgage uh, servicer is. You have to call them. Julie didn't say this, but it's incredibly critical. You cannot just uh, miss your payment. You have to call them and go through the process. Um, we're hearing, and she said it, that pretty much all the major servicers have streamlined this process. You do not have, it's, th- this does not adversely affect your credit. It does not uh, require any sort of proof of hardship. It does not require any sort of you know in-depth documentation. But what will happen inevitably is that they're going to start adding more bureaucracy to it. That's the reason every one of you listening and every one of you have to share this podcast with as many different people as you know. Go ahead and, and I'm talking about your centers of influence and past clients too. Let everyone know to put their mortgages in forbearance. Every single one of them, every single one of you must do that immediately. It can be your primary residence, a vacation property, or your rental property. Put them all in forbearance for 12 months. At the very least, you can maybe possibly make money off of it, right? You can create your own cash flow. But at the very worst, you won't have to absorb the pay- the missed payments if tenants decide they can't make the payment to you. What are you going to do, a victim in a market like this? And you're still going to have to make the payment unless you put your mortgage in forbearance. You have to do that now. The contacts are waiting for you on this form. Um, part of This is part one of our guide. And all you've got to do if you're a premier coaching student is just go to your normal website, <laughs> normal Harris Learning Portal, and download it. 
If you're not a, a Harris, um, I, one of our coaching clients, just text the word survival to 31996. That's right. And speaking of tenants, I've already had a couple of coaching clients get ready to talk to their tenants about putting their car payments into forbearance so they can make their, their rental payments. So lots of conversations, lots of reasons for you guys to be pounding the phone lines, right? Okay. So again, I don't have every lender in the universe listed here, but I'll tell you, Tim, our coaching clients are already sending updated phone numbers and what their experiences are. And we're going to be keeping this really updated. So uh, next consider getting a loan from the Small Business Administration immediately. Well, That's but, right. But Julie, SBA. Do, okay, so let's do the SBA point last because okay. that one's more complicated. Um, but let, let's just summarize this second bu uh, bullet, okay? Yep. So the next thing, guys, is put every. Julie just touched on it, but we want you to do this too. So number two, put all your credit card payments and anything that's a recurring debt, put it on um, forbearance. And again, it's not going to hit your credit. Make it so that you can preserve as much cash flow as you have. You might have a bunch of money in the bank. I know that's a minority of you, but still some of you might. Preserve your cash flow because this report has three parts. Personal, protect, and then profit. Profit is the last one. And we want you to keep as much as your powder dry as possible in the form of cash so that you can make it, you frankly can take advantage of some of the buying opportunities that will probably be happening at the end of this year to next year. In order for that to happen, you have to stay focused on the first uh, part here, which is personal, and then we're going to roll into protect next. Okay, Julie, I have another breaking news story. Yeah, lay it on me. Okay, fast this, and furious. This, we warned you guys. Yep, we're we're Julie and I are nutty about this. <laughs> All right, so this one came out yesterday, and it's really stupid and annoying. But here it is: the New York State has basically passed a rule that says you cannot cold call. Now I know that sounds insane, and they and here's what makes it extra special is that they don't define what cold calling is. So if you're in New York State, um, uh, we have put up the actual article, the actual information on our main website, timandjulieharris.com. Go there, read the article, and maybe this is a good time for you to get your local boards of realtors to flex some muscle. Now, if I were living in New York State and I were to receive a notification like that, I and the fact that they didn't define what the hell cold calling was, I would not stop calling my centers of influence and my past clients. I would not start, stop calling Everyone I know, love, and care about trying to be of assistance to them, providing, for example, this information we're providing for you. I would not let some overreaching bureaucracy stand in the way of my ability to help people and, frankly, take care of myself and my family. And you should have that same attitude. So if you want to read the actual article and press release, just go to timandjulieharris.com. Or if you're in, New York, you're in New York State, you probably were emailed it as well. Julie? Yes, and I just got an updated list of a whole bunch more lenders, which is fantastic, as well as some more financial aid resources. So I'll be posting these as well once I get these all crunched into one document. Good job. Uh, and also, somebody had asked me whether credit unions that hold mortgages will also be offering this, and I believe the answer is yes. And again, I'll be updating that information. Okay, so that's a whole lot of stuff. Well, this is the reason the foreclosure train is not even... the. the no, it's basically impossible. Yeah, in, the unless you're a complete idiot and don't call them. Yes, basically. <laughs> right? Well, even then they're not going to be doing foreclosures. No, I wouldn't think so because it wasn't self-inflicted. That's the main difference. Right. Remember, one of our rules is don't try and make this time just like the last time because it's not even close. That's right. And it doesn't matter what you've lived through, what your experiences were in the past. This is completely different. There's never been a time when basically the government has said, you know, no soup for you, you know, to the entire country. <laughs> Right. right. And that's basically what happened. Um, so uh, as far as that goes, Julie, like I said, this list that we are, this report that we're coming up with, the Agent Survival Guide, constantly being updated. So make sure you check back frequently and you make sure you're monitoring the latest information. Julie and I are going to be giving it to you as we receive it. That's right. Okay. Can we talk about the SBA business? For yes. A this is exciting. It is. Now, I, I am researching something. I read this morning that you have to not qualify with other lenders in order to qualify with SBA. I'm investigating that uh, because I've got some varying reports on that. But here's the thing. And I even apply, I gave them the link to apply for the SBA loan. Uh, let's see. SBA is working directly with the state governors to provide targeted low interest or no interest loans to small businesses and nonprofits that have been severely impacted. The SBA has something called the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. This is a new thing. It provides small businesses with working capital loans of up to $2 million that can provide vital economic support to small business helping overcome temporary loss of revenue that they're experiencing. So uh, you might as well apply to it. It's sba.gov disaster. They've got a lot more information on their website. So 
you can. They, we don't give them, don't, we won't have time okay. to like, yeah. No, that's fine. But anyway, uh, even if you don't think that you need it, you need to have that cushion because all of this is unpredictable. Again, we don't know if there's going to be a second wave. We don't know, you know, what kind of new regulation of real estate. We don't know. So uh, use your texture code 31996. No, text survival, survival to 31996. Survival to 36. Text survival to 31996. The, Julie was about to start to read off URLs, but the fact is it was taking the next 20 minutes. So text the code, just text the word survival to 31996. Now let's talk about this SBA loan. Here's what we know. And Julie, correct me if I'm wrong, because you've well, been studying sure, that sure. since 6 a.m. Yeah, yeah. this morning. So no, there's no interest for five years. They say no to low interest, but their low interest is usually like 2%. Okay. So, so basically no to low interest for five years, number one. Number two, I think that the, how are they formulating who's going to get the loan and how much do they control how, what you're going I'm, to do with I'm the money? I'm still investigating that because they have an actual application. I believe it's 50 employees or less, which is virtually everybody listening to this. Yep. Um, you can be your only yeah. employee, we think, and apply for this. So. I, I will be updating that along with a lot of yep. other stuff. So. Um, they can continue to ask for the updates and we'll get, we'll drill down on that. The point is this goes under the category of personal, take care of yourself, your finances. Even if you don't use the loan, knowing that it's there, knowing that that's your parachute. I mean, you guys need to be able to sleep at night so you can take care of your people. And I think this is a really good move. And you don't everybody. you don't have to use the money either. So if you basically get the loan and you're not having to pay any interest on it, or you're paying really small interest on it, evidently we're gonna have to find out as we get more information on this. You don't have to use the money. You can just leave it in the account. Um, and then, frankly, what I would do if I had, you know, it, we might even do this. Frankly, and we don't need the money. But it's a five-year interest-free loan. If you can get a five-year interest-free loan, every single it's one crazy. of you should be doing that. It's crazy not to. And then again. You know, when we get to the profit section of this whole thing, once you've made it through, because only the strong will survive through this year. This is going to be an interesting year and only the strong are going to survive. But when we get towards the last phase, which Julie and I are calling profit, it would be wonderful if you have the ability to have some cash in reserve and maybe you could use part of that SBA loan to yep. basically build your business, build your business back, rehire. At least you'd have the option. Right. Okay. So next we have part four of taking care of your personal life your business expenses, and that falls into five specific categories. You can cut some, you can negotiate some, and those categories are technology. So go through your credit card bill, ask yourself what tech bills you've got. Um, you know, you guys have been paying for some websites that don't and never have generated any business. So what's the deal with that? You've been paying for branding that didn't do anything for you. So technology, then we've got marketing and advertising, unnecessary broker fees and splits, speculative items and paid leads. These are all different buckets for you guys to look at. So here's really, if you want to get clear in your mind, anything and everything that does not lead directly to you putting money in your pocket, you need to cancel now. I know some of you are going to be freaked out about the idea that we're telling you to do some of these things because you thought they've worked in the past. So we mentioned this earlier. There are a lot of marginal ideas that seem to work when basically houses were selling themselves. When, when you're in a seller's market, all these crazy ideas come out of the woodwork, most of which, by the way, were, have been you know coming and going about every 10 years, branding and all this other stuff, big teams, expansion teams. All of these models only work when um, great cash flow covers up the fallacies in the actual business model, right? So if you have money that's constantly coming in from basically a hot seller's market, you're going to never have to really have a coming to Jesus session with the fallacies in your own business model. And that's what's happened. That's what's happened with all these tech companies. That's what's happened with a lot of you guys that were believing in some of these ideas. No one's going to be talking about artificial intelligence for a long time. No one's going QR to be QR codes, come on, guys. Right. No one's going to be talking about any of these little gimmicky things that only those conversations only happen in the vacuum of a seller's market. Now it's about survival. Now it's about learning the skills that maybe some of you have never had to learn because of the fact you've been, you know, essentially riding the wave of the seller's market. Those days are over and they're not going to come back anytime soon. Just look, guys, the bottom line is, is you have to assume that this is going to be worse. And we started out by saying 10 times worse, at least 10 times worse than you think it will be. I realize that all of us as salespeople, because that is what we all are, like it or not, 
We're naturally optimists. But the reality of it is, is that optimism sometimes basically starts morphing into complacency because you don't want to allow yourself to believe that things can get a lot worse. How is that going to work out for you now when things do get a lot worse because they're going to get a lot worse? Even at the other end of this, let's say we're talking a year from now and all this is in our rearview mirror and we're all basically you know, celebrating the fact that we made it through a global pandemic. I'm looking forward to that. But you know what? There are still going to be millions of people that are essentially without jobs. The economy will not bounce back. When, you know, Bob's rib joint, who basically is operating on a less than a 5% margin, when they go out of business and they burn through their cash savings, do you think that they're just going to open their, their doors again in, you know, six or 12 months? They're going to be gone. And that's what's going to happen with essentially... Guys, it's shocking to say this, but it seems like it's true. 60 to 70% of all small businesses right now in the country are basically going to have massive cash flow problems. That's what the government's acknowledging. And that's the reason that it looked like they're going to try to inject $5 trillion back in the economy. You are a small business. You are one of these people. You have to get, go to places in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, where you've never had to go before so you can survive this. On the other end of this is going to be one of the most incredible opportunities to profit. But you have to make it through it first. So we want you to take seriously these things we gave you. We want you to you know, leave no options, um, no boxes unchecked. Whatever you can do right now to preserve your cash flow is what you must be doing. And then stay connected. Stay close to the people that are going to be giving you the information you need. We're well, going to talk. It's we're gonna, called Premier Coaching, by the way. Right. I know it's called Premier Coaching. We're going to be talking about protect and protect is something that, frankly, is going to. I'm seeing a lot of people um, disseminate information that's basically about doing virtual tours and things like that. Guys, at the end of the day, those are all real gimmicks. They're not going to work long term. That's not going to make it so that you all of a sudden magically don't have to show houses anymore. That is not going to work long term. That's the bottom line. What you're going to have to realize is, is that what you're going to have to do to make money during this troubled time is different than what you've probably ever done before. We're going to be talking to you about BPOs. We're going to be talking to you about probate. We're going to be talking to you about different ways that will put money in your pocket urgently fast. That's where your focus has to be. But for you to survive this, you need to listen to the points that Julie just gave you, and you need to stop the bleed as fast as you can. You need to go into triage mode, basically. Do this first. Do this first. Right. Do it yesterday. Yesterday. So if you want the co- if you want to start getting these reports from us, and we're going to be coming out with these frequently, I want you to. And you're not part of a. And you're not a premier coaching student. First of all, what the heck are you waiting for? Um, but you can just go ahead and text the word survival uh, to three one nine nine six. Text the word survival to three one nine nine six, and we're going to text text you back immediately a link so you can become a member of the Premier Dash Experience dot um, coaching program. It is not the same as Premier. Not anywhere close. It's maybe 10%, but the information we are putting there is information like what we presented today. We're not putting these reports on our website. This is only for basically members of the Premier Dash Experience site or Premier. We're not going to be giving the information away like that because, frankly, it's going to be changing too quick. And we need to keep it updated. And I don't want to have a long trail of Great. you know blog posts and you know website posts that we have to go back and edit constantly. So this is how we're going to be doing it. It's, it's easier for us to be able to provide you guys quicker information, okay? That's what we want you to do. That's what you need to do. Please do us a favor. Spread the word. Put the word out about this podcast. Share this with every single real estate agent you know. Help us make it so as many of us get through this horrible time as possible. If there's anything we can do for you guys, if you need to talk with Julie or I directly, you can always text me. It's 512-758-0206. 512-758-0206. Do not wait on what we're asking you to do because what's going to happen what always happens when these programs are announced it happened last time during 07 through 09 it's going to happen this time is they're going to become quickly become overly bureaucratic as more people apply for the programs they're going to be more it's going to be more complicated there's going to be more informage there's going to be more everything take action on all this now give yourself some financial breathing room if you guys need us for anything you know how to work uh reach out to us we'll talk with you probably we're going to start doing this podcast probably at least two or three times a day. If you need us for anything at any time, please reach out. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio 
with Tim and Julie Harris. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.